Welcome to another video tutorial for Google SketchUp, this time showcasing some of the best plugins available. You'll notice that I have a lot of toolbars up here for the plugins I've installed. If you need to get any of those back up, you go to View, Toolbars, and then you'll be able to tick the ones you want. If you don't have the toolbar up, you'll be able to access most of them from either the Tools menu or the Plugins menu. The first one is called Work Plane, and it fixes a very common and frustrating problem where you're trying to draw a shape in 2D, but it actually draws it on multiple planes at once. It's very frustrating. So we'll delete this, and then I'm going to come to the new Work Plane icon. I'm going to put in three points, a center and two points to the side. And it's very important to double click or press enter to confirm, otherwise we'll lose the plane we've just made. If we zoom out, we'll see that it's put in a big flat plane, and this is like a surface for us to draw, and it'll stop whatever we draw, taking off to the side and other planes. So let's do a test. You'll notice if we pause it says on face in group, which is exactly what we want. and rotating around it's kept it nice and flat for us. We're finished with this plane now so we simply right click on it and there's a context menu for work plane and we can delete all or delete the selected one. We can actually have more than one of these planes going at a time. Very useful. Our next one is just as easy to use and it's called mirror. Mirroring is something that's done really easily in other CAD programs. It can be done in Google SketchUp, but it more, it's more of a workaround. So say I wanted another one of these, exactly the same, off to the side here. But I don't want to have to try and draw it and copy it exactly, because it probably won't be quite right. So what I'm going to do is select it all, then go up to the Mirror Selection, which is also found under Plugins. And just like with the plan, it's going to ask us for three points. One, two, three. It'll ask us if we want to erase the original, which we don't in this case. And you'll see that it's made a really nice mirror. Exact copy along the three points that we input. Very useful indeed. Much faster than the normal way of doing it. The next plugin is particularly useful for putting corners on things, or what we call a fillet. Now, if you wanted to, you could come along, draw a type of shape, and then get rid of it just like that. But doing all of these different edges around here, it's going to take a very long time. And also, if there's a particularly complicated shape, it's not really able to be done. So up the top here, we've got round corners in 3D, sharp corners in 3D, or bevel edges and corner. Let's do the whole thing the first time. And it's showing us a preview of where this is going to be cut. And what this means is it's going to curve from the green across the gold to the green again. You can change your distance down here. We'll hit go. Probably take just a little bit of thinking time. As you can see, it's put a nice radius, nice fillet on everything that we wanted. This also works for when you're doing only one thing at a time. So you click on the tool, then go into it, click all the ones you're interested in, and I might change this to something bigger, twice as big, 200. It gives us the preview that's going to curve from the green across to the other green. Hit go. Very, very quick, very fast to do. The other modes here are the bevel one, which is when you want it to do a straight line across. And before you do it, you've got some different buttons which sometimes are worth clicking just to see the effect and the different shapes that it makes. Our next tool is probably the most powerful plugin here. 
there's three tools that are part of the Kirby Loft set of plugins. One is to create a loft, another one is to create another type of loft, and the last one is to create a skin. I'll show an example of the two you'll use the most, which is the left hand one and the right hand one. Doing really rounded organic shapes is not something that's particularly easy in SketchUp, but using this plugin becomes a lot, lot easier. Here's an example of the first one. We click on the tool to go into the mode, and then we simply click the two shapes, go into preview mode by clicking the tick, and it's pretty much filling in the gaps in between for the shape. Once again, there's some different type of buttons to press here, which sometimes can have a, an effect. A lot of the time they don't seem to do too much, but it's worth clicking if you're after something slightly different. You can see this one has stopped it from going flat between them, but has added more of a curve. That one even more so exaggerated. When you're done, it's just a matter of clicking the plus, and you've got a beautiful organic curve. As you can see from here, their example they actually have a face. You can have multiple ones of these shapes and just click them one by one and you can make really long versions of things. The next one is called the skinning tool. We'll start off by drawing a flat shape on the ground and then I'm going to add some different curves. Try and get this one to go straight up with the blue, there it is. Up nice and high. Maybe some sort of shape on the side as well. Like this. This can be fairly complex what you set up here. Okay, so I've got a range of shapes. I'm then going to click on this button and then I'm going to click the outlines of all the bits I would like join together and then click go. You can see that it's joining up not just from one side to the other but it's also taking into account the sides. This tool is excellent for making things like sails and really nice rounded smooth organic shapes. It's just a matter of drawing out some different guidelines and outlines first and then coming into this mode, fiddling with the settings until it looks how you like, and then clicking the tick to make it happen. That's something that almost looks like a mouse for a computer, the back half of it. Very, very useful, powerful tools, and bringing SketchUp much closer to the normal standard of CAD software. The next one we're going to look at is very similar to that. The end result isn't quite as pretty, but watching it actually take place and happen is quite amazing. So I'm going to set up a shape here on the ground. Don't actually want all of that. I might set up this shape. I'll use a work plane here because I want to draw straight up. There we go, so this gives me the guy line I need to draw straight up. And now I'll delete my work plane. Okay, this next one is Soap Skin and Bubble. Apparently I have to select the loop first for this one, unlike the others where I click the button and then select it. I'm going to select all my pieces, then click on this, and it's going to ask me how many divisions I want. The higher the number, as you can see, the more detail will go into the shape. Once you've done that, press enter, and now the fun bit happens. This type of tool is excellent for doing sailcloths and things like that. It gives you a little bit more control as you're about to see. So 
So as soon as over on the left here says the time needed, we know that it is finished. So it doesn't look quite as pretty as the other one because it leaves this grid line over at the end, but it does have one other really nice feature. Once we click on one we've already made, we go to the bubble button, and this is where it gets really amazing. What it's asking us to do is to either blow or inhale on this like it was balloon. If we type a number, say 200, and hit enter, it's going to blow it up with the pressure of 200, whatever 200 is. This gives you a way to tweak your shapes to get them, if they're not quite right, to be able to modify them just a little bit. And once again, we let it go until it says the time that it took. You can type in another number. Maybe I want to try 500 and see how much that exaggerates it. And it blows up more. You can also type in negative numbers and it will suck back down and even go into negatives. Another tool really fantastic for doing organic shapes. Just like that. Our next tool set is called OS Coolian and it performs Boolean functions. To give you an example of what this does, say we wanted to cut some holes through this cylinder. <clears throat> if we're going from top to bottom, where both surfaces are flat and parallel, we simply draw on a shape and use the push-pull and it will cut a perfect hole. But what if we wanted to actually put a cut through the side, through the section here? It's not something very easily done in SketchUp, but this plugin makes it much, much easier. So what we're going to do is to cut this hexagon shape through the side of the cylinder. So first thing we're going to do is to make it into 3D shape. After that we're going to select the cylinder, make it a group. We're going to select the other one, make it a group. Both things that you're interacting must be groups otherwise it won't work. And then we're going to move our shape till it's through the middle. It's important to position it exactly how you would like the cut to go. And you notice that there's no lines drawn here. They're not actually interacting. It's just one thing floating in the middle of the other, but they have no relationship to each other. We'll come up to our tool set and we'll look at some of the different options. The first one is to combine the shapes. We click it, click on one, click on the other, and you can see it's drawn in the lines here, and these are now one object. It doesn't matter if I click on this part or click on this part, it selects the whole lot undo that. Next one is to make a cut leaving the bigger object behind. So I'll click the bigger object, then the smaller, it processes, and our cut is made. Next option is to, wherever it intersects, leave just the spot where they intersect behind. So it's going to delete all of the cylinder, delete all of this rod. Click on that. And just as we anticipated, our shape worked out beautifully. We've got some other ones here that will make the cuts, but leave all the pieces in play and just leave them separate so you can then drag them out of the way and move them to where you want to. But a very useful set of tools. I'll just ungroup this here by right-clicking and exploding. Okay, so we wanted to draw onto this round surface. It's very difficult to do. Normally you'd have to zoom in and go line by line over all the different surfaces, which is just going to take forever and not really worth it. We've got a set of tools called Tools on Surface. If we click to start it, we've got all of our normal drawing tools, and we're going to start with a rectangle. As you can see, it's drawing a rectangle on this surface. See if we can do a better example. Let's try a circle here. And that circle curls around the surface instead of being flat and floating out in midair. It's also a freehand drawing tool.
that once again automatically locks down and does our shape. So see if we click now that, that surface is different to that surface it's been divided up for us. This is a great way to show off our next tool. In fact I might even draw a second shape here to show it off really well. We're going to set up a nice organic curve to go straight up in the air just like that and then we'll join it back up to make it a loop even down even better so like we did earlier we're going to do the skinning tool which is going to draw us a nice 3D shape just like that very complex in fact and with our normal push pull, which is really the heart of how SketchUp works, we have to have a flat surface to begin with and we can only do one at a time. If I come up to view and turn on hidden geometry, we can see that something like this is made up of lots of different surfaces. And if I want to do a push pull, I can only do one at a time and it's going to be all ugly and spiky, ignoring all of the rest. It's actually a way around that, and it's our next plugin. It's called Joint Push Pull. If we turn off Hidden Geometry, so it makes this one surface again, we select it, and then we come to Joint Push Pull. We'll find that we can actually get it to do all of these in one go. So we click and drag it the way we want to go, then we double click, watch the percentage down here, and this was a very complex shape, so it's not really surprising that it's had some dramas. But let's try it. Something over here, let's try it on this shape here. So we select the shape first, joint push pull it. and it's kept the curve across the front and it's let us do more than one thing at once. Another time you might find this useful, say you had a grid of squares and you wanted to change the height on them all at the same time instead of one, you simply select them all first, go to joint push pull, click and drag up and you'll be doing all of them in one go saving you a lot of time.